the volunteer state of Tennessee at 91,000 seat Neyland Stadium, welcoming us to the Lee Apparel Southeastern Conference Game of the Week. Today in a Knoxville rain, LSU stalking what would be a huge upset as it challenges the 11th ranked and high powered volunteers of Tennessee. Welcome to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. It's been raining for better than an hour. With Tim Foley, I'm Paul Kennedy, and Tim, and LSU and Tennessee, two teams who love to pass, they're going to have to do so this afternoon with the wet football. Yeah, well, this is the kind of day you would like to establish the run, and I think both teams would be interested in doing that. When it comes to throwing the football, Tennessee has a distinct advantage, and that comes in the form of Heath Schuler. He is just something else. He's just been marvelous here for Tennessee, and he's got great athletic ability, tremendous leadership qualities, and he's, he's a tough kid. You know, he, he didn't let him give him one of those sissy numbers like 8 or 11. You know, he got 21 like a real player, a football player. Yeah. He threw five touchdown passes last week in Gainesville against the University of Florida. Three came to the junior, Billy Williams. Yep. Butch Cassidy found the Sunday, it found Sundance Kid, and uh, Heath Schuler found Billy Williams in Gatorland last week and came up with three big catches. The guy can really fly and is developing a sense of where the open area is now. He found the open area and ripped the ball away from the Gator defensive back here just prior to the half, a signature play for Billy Williams in Tennessee. Let's turn to LSU celebrating this year its 100th season of college football. Curly Holman trying to restore the grandeur and glory of football in Tiger Town, and he talked about what it would take for LSU to upset Tennessee here this afternoon. I think we got to be a much improved football team than what we were last week, and I think that's in an area, not so much X's and O's, but an area where you're talking about your concentration, your poise, and your intensity level, maintaining those three things. I think that's the area. We came out of the blocks last week, and I thought we were a better football team. So Curly Holman's Tigers taking on the balls and sold out Neyland Stadium. And our game is next on the Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week. Tennessee hosting LSU. And as our kickoff nears, let's check in with our sideline reporter down in the rain. Here's Bob Kessling. Well, I guess I'm not surprised at you guys by telling you it's pouring down rain here. But they said this field drains very well. So that shouldn't be much of a problem. Ball control and just getting the snap from center might be the toughest thing for both of the quarterbacks. And speaking of the quarterbacks, Heath Schuler, of course, is the guy that makes this Tennessee team go. He's got 10 touchdown passes already, but hasn't really played that well just yet. We talked to Heath today about all the hype he gets and how he handles all the attention he's been getting. Well, um, it is distracting, but uh, for a person who don't let it go out of his mind, uh, you have to... Uh, let everything take care of itself. Um, this season, I want two things to happen. Is Number one, uh, be the best leader I can for my team. And number two, get my team where they need to be in order to win a championship. So the Heisman Trophy and all that talk doesn't phase you much? It will take care of itself. Heath would like to throw a lot of touchdown passes today, but Tennessee wants to run the ball better. They only had 76 yards on the ground last week. And that is uh, LSU's Achilles heel. They are last in the conference in total defense and last in the conference in rushing defense. So the Tigers, if they want to win today, are going to have to probably stop a Tennessee ground attack. And, of course, the rain is not going to help throwing the football at all. Paul? Thank you very much, Bob. And, uh, indeed, we will see LSU with the football first. I think that's the way that they would like it. Tennessee won the toss and deferred to the second half. So we'll get an early look at a young freshman who's been gathering great acclaim, and that's Eddie Kennison to return the opening kickoff for Curly Holman and the Tigers from Baton Rouge. Tennessee coming into this game, having won twice with one loss. The loss, of course, came in SEC fashion last week. A shootout, 41-34 to in Gainesville. The most points that Tennessee has ever scored and lost a football game, Bob. And I'm... What a football game it was. Just fantastic. Tennessee slipping behind and uh, fighting to get back into the game. They dropped behind 20 to nothing, but uh, Phil Fulmer was encouraged. He never really, his team never really gave up and kept fighting to get back in, but Florida eventually closed the door on them. LSU with one win, a pair of losses, an SEC play. It has beaten Mississippi State two weeks ago and was rattled by Auburn 34 to 10. John Bexford kicking off for Tennessee to Eddie Kennison to the left of your screen and David Butler to the right. Raining a little bit lighter, isn't it, than it was about 20 minutes ago. And the ball is in the air, and here will come Kennison from his five-yard line. Cuts to the 
20. He has the sidelines at the 30. The 39-yard line. Speed got him to the outside, and Vincent Brown made the stop for Tennessee. It's a return of 36 yards, and LSU is in business right away for its young sophomore quarterback in Jamie Howard from Lafayette, Louisiana, who has one of the strongest arms in the southeastern country. Of course, he pitches for the Danville Braves, spends his summer playing baseball, but now it's football time again. The fullback, Jermaine Williams. The tail is Jay Johnson. First play of the afternoon from the 40. And it is to the tailback in Johnson. And Johnson has midfield into ball territory. And he steps out of bounds at the Tennessee 34-yard line. You have the huge kickoff return and then a gallop of 26 on first down by Johnson. Lynn Amity trying to get the running game going here at LSU and a fine job of blocking there by the LSU offensive front, and then Jay Johnson takes it downfield and inadvertently steps out of bounds. The Waco, Texas native, the tailback again. The tight end and Bishop to the wing right side. LSU flanks the field on first down. They'll try it again. They're on the left side, slipping the tackle. And maybe a yard or two. Johnson is hauled down by Ronald Davis, the right quarterback for the Volunteers. So look at our Mazda starting lineups this afternoon, and we begin with the Tigers. Howard, a quarterback, as we said. Johnson with the big carry there. That's Brett Besh, a wide receiver, along with Harold Wilson. Kevin Mawai, regarded as one of the better centers in the SEC 10. Yes, he is. He was an all-SEC tackle last year. They moved him to center. They felt like they had enough experience at tackle, and he's been doing a fine job for him. And a yard on the play. Johnson takes the toss. Sweet look at the gaping hole, and he's a yard shy of the first down. Jason Parker, the free safety, had to come up from the secondary and make the stop. A four-man front for Tennessee. Johnson, who coming in to this game was the second leading rusher for LSU, had all of 75 yards, though, in two games. And Tim, he may have 75 before the first quarter ends today. Exactly, and they're doing a fine job. Tennessee's got great pursuit on defense, and they're, they're getting the defensive end trapped up field and then cutting off the pursuit. Good cutback by Johnson. It's creating a natural seam in that Tennessee defense. He has rushed for 42 yards alone in this opening drive for the Tigers. A hole off the right side for Williams, pounding it inside the 10-yard line, and down to the 8. I didn't think LSU, with the first down, had a ground attack, Then This is surprising. Well, they've got talented people. Watch number 73, Ronnie Simnack, and then Marcus Price closes down on the linebacker, and that's a design cutback play. They get people moving, to the strong side, and then good cut by the back takes it into the seam created by the pursuit. The seventh play of this opening drive on a wet field, LSU has stayed on the ground. Every snap has been a rushing play. The tailback is back up this time in Jay Johnson and dropped for a loss on the play. And it's Paul Yatkowski. The senior right tackle from Winnipeg, Canada, that led the surge for the Volunteers. 
Yatkowski and Shane Bonham are the two interior linemen for this Tennessee defense and have different styles of play. Bonham is more of a hard-nosed, straight-ahead type of person, and Gatkowski, who is a junior college All-American, is more elusive. Good play by Paul. Well, second down now and meeting 11. Flag down. Howard in the flat has to complete slipping out of bounds. Robert Cooper out of bounds at the uh, seven-yard line. Uh, second down and goal for LSU. The referee today, Jimmy Harper, behind the line of scrimmage in the LSU backfield is the gentleman who threw the flag. Illegal procedure against LSU. Deep back move before the, at the same time the ball was now five yard penalty. The Southern baritone of Jimmy Harper, which we will enjoy this afternoon in Nalen Stadium. In a scoreless first quarter. LSU return the opening kickoff if you're just joining us. 36 yards. The first snap went for 26 to Jay Johnson. Off the left side. It's been all LSU thus far until the loss, the tackle for a loss by Yatkowski of Tennessee. And now the first penalty of this game. The ball at the 16 for Howard. He goes airborne and sliding, making the catch at the 12-yard line is Chris Hill, the tight end. And they say he dropped the ball. It is an incomplete pass for Hill. Lynn Amity, who's the offensive coordinator at LSU, substituted Hill right before the snap to get him into the game for that man right there, Jamie Howard. Chris Hill is a tight end. He came up with a couple of clutch, uh, clutch catches in LSU's last drive against Mississippi, Mississippi State a couple of weeks ago. And there you see Lynn Amity on the right of the screen talking to Billy Holman. Wins the offensive coordinator downstairs for the first time this week. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Tennyson comes in motion for LSU. And we have motion on the left side, and Mark King, the guard, moved prior to the snap. So LSU drives against Tennessee and now is beginning to stall inside the 20 yard line. Had first and goal. The ball snap. We have a false start. Illegal movement, offensive line, five yard penalty. The second penalty down deep for LSU. And as a head coach, one of the things that you don't want to do is beat yourself. And, you know, they've had a couple of pen penalties here that are self-inflicted. And I think they're going to try to simplify things this week. Give Howard a few things to do. Get the hands, get the football in the hands of people that can really make something happen. A single back set. It's third and goal with Tennyson in motion, but all the way out at the 21-yard line. Howard. As time releases, but shy of a first down, obviously, the 16 by Chris Hill. So it's field goal time for LSU, hoping to get three here as Tennessee's defense comes up strong toward the end of the drive. LSU makes a couple of mistakes. Tally on the tackle, the fine outside linebacker for the balls. And on the kick it for LSU, Andre LaFleur. You say those, uh, those French names good, Paul. Say, say Baton Rouge. That's all Rouge. A 33 yard try from the hat. He chopped at it. The kick on the left is good. And LSU has scored first. A 3 to nothing football game here in Knoxville. The best defense for LSU is keeping that volunteer offense that Coach Fulmer brings onto the field today on the sideline. And that's what they did with a 10-play drive to open the game. And there you see Phil Fulmer, 3-0 and before he was officially head coach, uh, performing the duties uh, while John Majors had a surgical problem. And then last year, winning a bowl game. So he took the job. He was 4-0. Got off to a good start. Big victory against Georgia. And then a hard-fought football game in Gainesville last week. Matt Hercan picks the ball short, trying to avoid Billy Williams, and he does. And up man has wrestled down quickly. And Aaron Hayden, the running back, at the ball 25. Time now for Heath Schuler to step to center stage. Five touchdown passes. As we mentioned a week ago, against Florida, and he's already matched his touchdown total, Tim, of a season pass. Ten touchdown passes already this year, but uh, 
For example, his senior year in high school, he threw 42, so he's only 25% of the way there. It's Faulkner and Williams to his right. And Fleming to the far side left. First snap is given to the tailback in Charlie Gardner. And Gardner scampers for three and is run into the uh, ball bench. A look at Tennessee starting right up this afternoon with a Schuler in command. And rather than Mario Brunson, it's Moe Phillips that will start at fullback. Brunson is a bit shaken up. Right, and they don't want to use him unless they have to. And Phillips is a fine replacement. The offensive line, very young. The oldest man there, Kevin Mays, the left guard is a junior. Everyone else, a sophomore for Schuler, who's going quickly to the sideline. He has it complete. And right out of first down for Corey Fleming. The leading receiver for the Volunteers. Well, it'll be about a football length shy as LSU keeps it from earning the first down. I like James Gilliard, who plays on the defensive front in a four-man scheme for LSU. Four-man scheme with the two defensive ends standing up, along with a good set of linebackers and Anthony Marshall, a fine player at three safety. Eating a yard, Tennessee has the first down. Keith Schuler on the carry. Curly Holman last night when we chatted with him said what he admires most about Heath Schuler is that he's a true football player. Ran the option in high school, stout, muscular, hard nose. Right, I'm, I'm a uh, surprised they don't have the uh, toss where he turns around and tosses it to the running back and leads the play. Holmes Phillips set behind him. Schuler down the middle, it's tipped and nearly intercepted as he was hunting Craig Faulkner over the middle, and Mike Calais, the middle linebacker, dropped right into the root, got a hand on it. Good job by Calais. Uh, both Desotel and Calais, I don't think you'd call them pass defense experts. Uh, very tough against the run. Bill Fulmer knows that as he takes his notes. And this secondary has got some talented individuals in it and, uh, that just haven't really found the track yet. Second down and ten. Play action. Schuler deep. Batted away. Incomplete. Intended for Fleming. But before he changed the corner, was right on his hip, and LSU did not bite into the play pick. And James, he was a receiver last year, so he knows what to think when the ball's in the air. He's not like most of us defensive backs. LSU has given up some big plays early in the year, and Tennessee trying to get a big chump chunk right now. But James running right with Fleming makes a good play on the ball. Out of the shotgun, five receivers out for Tennessee on third and 10. Schuler, scrambles, pulls it down. Schuler has the first down at midfield and steps out of bounds in LSU territory at the Bayou Bengal 44. A gain of 18 by a fellow who probably loves to run it just as much as throw it in East Shuler. Well, I think that he is becoming a little bit more patient. You don't see him coming out of the pocket quite as much this year. A young quarterback will go to his primary receiver. If he's not open, then he's going to get gone. Shuler looks, looks, goes to one, goes to two, not there. Now he's hoofing it. And when he runs, I mean, he's an effective ball carrier. Turns the corner. Gardner and Phillips, here is Gardner. Nothing there. The front wall led by Ike Bullitt, the senior right tackle for Baton Rouge, the 257-pounder, made the stop. It's a gain of oh, about a yard. LSU has an interesting look on defense up front. Two down linemen, two defensive ends. People lined up in the defensive end position anyway, but they are standing up in the... The reason I think they're doing this is that just their, their personnel almost commanded that they make an adjustment in their scheme. Schuler to the sideline. That's caught by William. A first down at the LSU 29. And he is immediately dropped by Denard Walker in the secondary. That's a gain of 13. So LSU, which trails early, or rather Tennessee, which trails early by a field goal, is driving now on LSU. Schuler, as the season develops, become going to become more and more confident in this band, Billy Williams. He can go deep, so the cornerback has to give him some room, especially on a slippery surface. But if you give him too much room, 
They're just going to wear them out with those short hitches. The third first down of the afternoon, and now Gardner shredding the defensive front. Gets into the linebacking core, and Robert Deswatel drops him for LSU. Gardner, who picked up 107 yards rushing in Tennessee's last appearance here at home in the win over Georgia. What a great year he had a season ago after transferring in here from Scottsdale Community College. Now a senior. Second down. get a good block here as Garner turns it up in the hole number 67 really broadens things out Walker misses and finally Anthony Marshall corrals him and pulls him to the turf but a fine job up front by the Tennessee left side with the eyes shut behind Schuller on first and goal here is James Stewart and Stewart is down inside the two yard line close to the one Tennessee can run so many tailbacks as you said. Charlie Gardner we have seen, Aaron Hayden, and now James Stewart at the tail. Well, Hayden and Stewart, of course, were here before Gardner even arrived. And uh, he came in here and with his, his style of running, this guy's just reckless. He takes it up inside and, uh, and he loves to have the football in his hands. They are certainly well set at tailback. They can come at you all day long. Three tight ends for the balls. Horn in motion, and they'll give it to Stewart, and he's into the chuckered end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Stewart scoring his second touchdown of the season and the first this afternoon. As Bill Fulmer's volunteers have driven on their first possession for the TD. But James Stewart, it's straight ahead. Fine job blocking. Good job by Bobby Williams from LSU trying to fill that hole, but Stewart fought it off and got six. Lance Wheaton to hold for John Bexford. And the point after try is good. Seven to three, Tennessee. Back after a word from your local stadium. Both Tennessee and LSU have scored on their opening possessions of the afternoon the balls driving 73 yards on 12 plays to enjoy their first lead of the day and it is Kennison and Butler awaiting the kickoff from Bexford and Kennison who returned the opening kickoff 36 yards heads right down the middle of the field up to the 25. Whenever you're dealing with a return man that has the speed that Eddie Kennison has, or Billy Williams for that matter, or David Butler last year who was on the Fab freshman team as a return specialist, you gotta stay at home, stay in your lane. If you converge too quickly on the ball, they're so quick they can get around the perimeter and turn it into a big game for you. A return that time of 21 yards by Kennison who ranks fourth in the Southeastern Conference in all-purpose yards. More than 50 this afternoon. Jamie Howard on his second possession of the day in wet and rainy Knoxville, Tennessee. And on first down, here's Jay Johnson. There's not much off the right side. They call Reggie Ingram, the prototypical middle linebacker, and he stepped into the hole to knock him down. Reggie Ingram has Excellent leadership qualities. It's the kind of guy that you want calling the signals in the huddle. He is reliable and consistent, and there isn't any tougher in this league from tackle to tackle. But he's got a limitation is that he's probably not as fast as, as you'd like it to be, but that'll be just getting greedy to demand that. Johnson is on the way. Here comes Tennyson headed this way in motion for Howard. Howard has Tennyson, finds it. Close to the first down, about a yard and a half shy. Jason Parker with his third tackle already in the first quarter. Strangely enough, they've given Eddie Kennison number two because when they talk of him, they compare him to David Palmer. You see, 
Scott Ray driving it off and Kennison down in the flat. Good job by Jason Parker attacking that. The Kennison is explosive and they're going to try to get the ball in his hand. On third down, uh, LSU got a good spot. He's about the length of the football. They will stay on the ground and have a big play to show for it. Jay Johnson to midfield. And a yard and a half into Tennessee country. Johnson, the sophomore from Waco, Texas, with a great block applied by Mark King, the guard on the left side. Let's see it again. Jay Johnson takes it to his left. And a good job by Maui, Maui sealing off. And I think that was Mark King that had opened it up, right, Paul? Yep. 7 to 3, Tennessee. Midway through, corner number one. Nothing there but an orange wall at midfield. Led by number 90, Ben Talley, the top tackler for Tennessee. Has been for two years. And as his linebacker coach, John Chavis, says, Talley has the ideal body at 6'3", about 240, for a linebacker. And he's got the ideal aptitude, too. You know, he's fierce. And he played behind Ernest Fields for a year, and he learned from Ernest, and then a couple of years have started now. Three receivers on second down and even 11. Tennessee comes with a four-man rush. Howard is in trouble and throws it away. And he had an open receiver in Scott Ray, and the ball flew over Ray at the Tennessee 40-yard line. I'll tell you who he had open, Paul. He had Chris Hill down the middle. Tennessee in a two-deep zone, and Chris Hill had it deep early. And, of course, he wasn't he might not have been looking there, but Jamie Howard's going to get better and better as he learns what to look for and he learns to relax in the pocket there. Needing to convert here on third and 11. Right at the midfield stripe out of the shotgun. And rolling for time. And throwing incomplete. And in the Tennessee bench intended for Tennyson. But he was getting some pressure too from Tennessee's Scott Galen, who is coming up in his face. And we have a penalty marker down, and it's holding the call against LSU. It's a third infraction. Committed During the Tiger. play, holding offensive line, penalty is declined before down. I think in obvious passing situations you may see LSU trying to move the pocket a little bit to get Jamie Howard a little bit more time he's got good fees a fine athlete and Curly I think feels if they can get him on the corner get him a little closer to the receiver he's got a gun and he can get it to the sideline Scott Holstein punting to the Louis a Louisiana native to Tennessee he shot summer he hangs it very very high Ball will bound at the three-yard line, skip into the end zone, touchback on a kick of an even 50 yards. Seven to three, Tennessee at Nayland Stadium in Knoxville. Alignment, give that boy. <laughs> he should get a couple. That's great. Good work. See Lynn Amity working feverishly on the sidelines, talking to his players. Usually he's up in the booth so he can see better, but going to get down closer to him, be able to look in their eyes a little bit more. Calm them down if they get excited. Prepare them to play the next series. He sure took Tennessee 73 yards on the first possession of the day. And it's most Phillips here on the first snap. Stopped by the right end. Corey White, the senior from Shreveport. Louisiana. Really the key play in that opening possession for Tennessee was Shuler's scramble on third and ten that kept the drive alive. Third down recently has been a problem for both these defenses. James Stewart. A tough couple. Off the left side, setting up third down. And Eric Valentino. Number 99, a sophomore defensive end from Houston, Texas, on the stop that time for LSU. Important here, too, for LSU. Boy, if they could get the football back and chase this Tennessee offense off the field, that would 
certainly bode well for the Bengal Tigers in the early going here. The yards just about even on the ground today. So far. Bubba Miller over the foot of the ball for Tennessee. And yes, LSU will get the ball back. James Stewart stacked up by Mike Calais. No gain on the play. And Mike Lugar, the defensive coordinator at LSU, going after him. You know, lit the candle that time, brought just about everybody. This is a blitz, and here they all come. Taking a chance early on on third down. Trying to tell his boys that he's going to give them aggressive calls. He's going to do his job. They just got to play him. You see Mike Calais, red shirt freshman out of Patterson. Tommy Hutton, number 43. To put his foot into it. Left footed putter. And whoa, he hammered this, and Kennison catches it over his shoulder. And has to step out of bounds. Nice field position by Hutton as he kicked it to the boundary and used the sideline to his advantage. Well, you want to do as much as you can to keep it out of Kennison's hands. And that was a fine punt by Hutton. If he let it bounce, it still would have been in bounds and might have gotten a favorable Tennessee bounce. And he stayed up by seven. You see the Badgers are off to a good start. Three and oh, and leading early. And of course, Thursday night, Bill Curry's troops rallying to beat the Gamecocks in Columbia. Congratulations to the Wildcats. Tennessee dropping the running back in Jay Johnson for a loss on first down. Johnson had had a solid first quarter. Seven carries for 55 yards. Here's Steve White with the tackle for a loss of two. Well, you got great coaches on both sides of the ball, and you know after that first drive, I'll guarantee you the Tennessee defense has made some adjustments. They're going to be a little bit more patient on the backside. Needing a dozen on second down. Howard play action down the middle of the field, and it is caught for a first down. Big Chris Hill at 6-5. Open between the hashes. Parker came up to make the stop. Let's check in with Bob Kessler. Yeah, you know, Curly Holman had said before the game he wanted to try and get his backups in early. The second team, the whole offensive line is in there right now. This is a crucial series for LSU not to lose any of the momentum they had gained early in this first quarter. <laughs> Bob looks good. That, Cass, you look good down there, buddy. You're earning your money. Good job. Marcus Caboose, the center in that second unit. May have been a busted play. The handoff deep in the backfield. Jay Johnson and Howard had a little trouble on the exchange. Curly Holman's philosophy at Southern Miss was to play two distinct offensive lines. And he felt you really could develop some depth that way. And also uh, some camaraderie and some spirit in your unit. Larry... Zerline is the line coach here now and has these guys ready to do that. David Butler checks in at the tailback position for the first time this afternoon. The young sophomore from the home of Louisiana. Inside handoff, the turn of the fullback. Breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Has two. Make that Robert Tuber. On the carry. Tuber's out of third down. Tumors out of Sylvester, Georgia, and uh, he had talked about transferring. And uh, you know, they convinced him he'd get a chance to carry the ball more. And you can bet Phil Fulmer, I don't think he had to promise Mario Brunson anything. Mario's carried it once so far this year. <laughs> He's actually does a great job of blocking for those nifty tailbacks. See if Tennessee comes here. Uh, they were jumping around, and the right tackle in Tom Turner moved for LSU. Dead ball before the ball snap. Illegal movement. Offensive line. I think Tennessee was. Got a send out then. Turner doing two. Turner had played a couple of games, started a couple of games at the left, left tackle because Ross Setter had some knee problems with Setter back now. That's a third penalty for LSU. All come at critical times. Yep, this is third and 12. It shows blitz, and now the balls jump. Howard will be sacked, and he'll get another snap. With the flag down, James Wilson, the fine left end, the senior from Hampton, Virginia. 
one of the better pass rushers in the Southeastern Conference, dumped Howard, but uh, it came after the penalty. See it again, Tennessee trying to play with the heads of the LSU offensive linemen a little bit, trying to fake coming, and one of them got caught in the neutral zone. So here we go, five yards against Tennessee. We'll try this again. First penalty of the game, whistled on Tennessee. Another man in the game now for Tennessee, Paul, is someone they're very excited about, Kevin Franklin out of Baton Rouge. He's a, he's a true freshman. They have some speed on the field right now. Pass to the top of the three. Tennessee to the bottom of the picture. On third down and rolling against the grain, Howard. Floats it downfield. Kennison has it. That's a first down for LSU at the Tennessee 46-yard line. Jamie Howard a little slow getting up back there, and justifiably so. We're going to watch this route develop. Jamie Howard taking the ball from center, rolling out. Franklin on the sideline. Kennison coming inside. Howard turned back and floated the ball inside to Kennison. A very, very aware play, and Eddie makes the catch for the first down. We have less than a minute remaining in the first quarter, and Howard is four for seven through the air in the first period. Not rattled at all here. Morocco. David Butler jacked up and breaks the tackle. Gallops off to the right side and down to the 40-yard line. Kept the legs going. Did Butler the sophomore. You know, that was Scott Gallion that smacked him, and Scott out of Seymour, Tennessee, and got a good lick on him, but Butler showed last year that he could keep his footing, and we mentioned earlier that he was on a FAB freshman team, USA Today, and as a return specialist, but he can run. Wilson left, best to the right side, and the first quarter has come to an end. LSU hanging with the 11th ranked Volunteers, seven to three for one period of play here in Knoxville. Welcome back to Knoxville and a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter statistics here and you will see that the LSU has raised some eyebrows with their play offensively through the first 15 minutes. And they have achieved what Curly Hallman talked about last night, Paul, some balance in their attack. Kennison set to the slot on the left side. The balls lock up the blitz. They won't come and play action for Howard. Howard over the middle. Hunting Kennison incomplete at the 25-yard line. LSU has won once in the history of the rivalry of these two teams in this stadium. But that came in their last trip to Neyland Stadium Shields Watkins Field back in 1988. In fact, the uh, visiting team has won each of the last three games. But would you say then they're on a streak? Third. That's one. The way things have been going in Baton Rouge, that they take any kind of streak they can, they can get. But the young kids are playing well today. Yes, they are. Trailing 7-3 early in the second quarter. The second unit offensive line remains in the game. Floating it deep downfield, wide open. John Sartell, or check it, Brett Fesch, wide open. And overthrown at the 15. A defensive mistake. And uh, one offensively, too, by Howard. You know, at some, at some point, Jamie Howard, we saw him last year against Auburn, and he just had an excellent game, came into the game, started whipping it around, and was fairly accurate with the ball. But this year he's completing just a little better than 30% of his passes. And, uh, you know, Lynn, I'm sure, is talking to him about pushing. Big puck here, first down, LSU. LSU gambles and maintains possession at the Tennessee 33-yard line. On the carry, Anthony Marshall. On the short snap. Go up, man. This is a type of game that you like to coach in. You feel like you've got good players. You feel like you can be competitive. Nobody else does. You feel, in that sense, you have nothing to lose. You know, you can roll the dice. Yep. Put it on, let's see, red, 17. Spin that thing. Scott Ray, Shedrick Wilson. This possession for LSU playing ball control masterfully here in the first half. The handoff to Robert Tuber for the Tennessee 30-yard line. Excellent job by Kevin Mawai and 
Ronnie Simnick on the right side, getting some movement in that volunteer front. Giving Toomer some room. Toomer backed up Odell Beckham last year. So he wants the great back run. And, but he feels he can be a great one. Curly Holman talked to Mike Bugar on the sideline. Toomer remains the alone setback. Three receivers to the left side, a tight end set to the right for Howard. Lowering his head again at 212 pounds. Toomer drives it inside the 30 and uh, down to the 27-yard line. Horace Morris makes only his first tackle of the afternoon. It's been a quiet first half for him, the uh, big senior right in. Let's watch number 52, Kevin Maui. Good job. He helps out left and then comes off. <laughs> Cal hit. Third and three for LSU. Fumble. And the quarterback Howard has to pounce on it at the 30. Coming out from Maui. Slippery ball. He lost the handle and had a pull on it. And uh, Andre Lafleur will come into the game to attempt what will be a 47-yard field goal in his second attempt of the afternoon. He kicked earlier a field goal of 33 his long kick of the year 49 against mississippi state two weeks ago out of chad luke's home a high snap he gets his foot into it and it is good andre lafleur the walk-on is having still another big day and he pulls lsu within one here in knoxville LSU's Andre LaFleur has just kicked his second field goal of the afternoon, and what a job Chad Luke did on the hold. Chad, Chad Luke gets the Citizen Award for this LSU football team. Here's a guy that's been a part-time starter over a three-year period, been relegated pretty much to almost no action early in this season, but he has done nothing but try to do the best he can every week, and that time, you know, he that, somehow they ought to give him <laughs> three points there because he did an excellent job of getting that ball down and then Andre where did he come from LeFleur knocked it through kicking here to Billy Williams one of the great kickoff return men in all of college football whack is he leveled at the 22 yard line by Bobby Williams a reserve linebacker after the return of 16 and that hit could be heard all the way up here at top of the upper what it sounds like when a Williams hits a Williams, you know, wow. Let's watch this again. Williams one, meet Williams two. Down we go. Say LeFleur again, just for me. LeFleur. Oh, yes. LSU with 29 plays from the line of scrimmage. Tennessee only 15. Great ball control thus far by LSU. And flat, complete to Williams, out to the 30-yard line. Again. Well, we'll, we'll see this again, I think. Uh, I hope, because this looks like a first hopper. You guys take a look and see what you think. Nope. Great call. Good catch. Way to go, Billy. <laughs> but, but he got whacked again. You know, he's going to ask Heath to give him a rest for a second. Schuler's third completion of the afternoon and uh, five tries, 27 yards thus far in the first half. Again, against a four-man front, it is Gardner. For a first down, staying on his feet, upfield to the 40-yard line. Gabe Northern, the linebacker, came up and made the stop for LSU. And I think when you're playing against a team like LSU, you just run the ball till they make you do something else. And uh, that's what's happening here. A fine job by that Tennessee front. Good hustle to get back in it. You know, Hilliard... Hang on. A fresh set of downs for Tennessee, and they run the counter to the left side. Gardner headed to the sideline and run out of bounds after a gain on the play of about three. Tory James from the secondary. Gardner's game today. Coming into this game as the Tennessee's Top ground gainer averages better than five yards a carry, and last year came very close to gaining 
a thousand yards for Phil Fulmer. And Phil Fulmer talked about not being physical enough against Florida last year, and he certainly wanted to make that statement this week. Schiller to the boundary, threw it behind his brother Benjamin. Here's Bob out on the field. Yeah, we got an injury update on Robert Desotel, the linebacker from LSU. First, they brought him out. They checked his left knee, put a brace on it. Now he's got cramps in his right calf. So, so far, the heat, I guess, is catching up to Robert and the rest of the Tigers, maybe, on defense. The junior from Lake Charles. And uh, a fine cover guy. Good pass rusher, too, and had a huge game against Auburn last week with close to 10 tackles. Possession snap, third and seven for Schuler out of the shotgun. Five men out. Schuler looking for one of them and it's broken up incomplete. No flag and kick for Corey Fleming. Ivory Hilliard, the strong safety. Time to break on the ball. Good job by Hilliard. Makes a play here on Corey Fleming. He was helping on the inside. Receiver was being trailed on the outside and Ivory reading the ball, makes contact with Fleming right on time. Good call, no pass interference. And here is Hutton. The kick it to Boo Kinnison. Oh, skied it very high. Kinnison turned catch and he makes it at his eight yard line. Had a return and uh, elected the fair catch it. That's a surprise. A punt of 48 yards for Tommy Hutton. Uh, Curly Holman's team is down but by a point at seven to six. And we have a new quarterback in for LSU. And I think this is a good thing to get, get Jamie out of the game, let him rest a little bit, let his heart rate come down. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see them doing the same thing for he's sure. And if you can pull it in the game on that side of the ball. So the fifth-year senior in Luke takes over. And on the first play, he's scrimmage, the inside handoff. Cradled, protected by Jermaine Williams. He's cut down by a Scott Gallion, taking his second tackle of the afternoon. If patience is a virtue, Chad Luke has certainly waited for his opportunity to play. He has started a dozen games in a four-year career for LSU, but has really never been the guy in purple and gold. And the, the other side of that is maybe he's never really had the surrounding cast to be the guy. The draw on second down, David. Tennessee shuts it down well. And it is third down. Yankowski for the fourth time. Canadian from Winnipeg. You ask yourself, uh, how does a defensive lineman from Winnipeg end up here in Knoxville? Shane Bottom, who plays on the other side, the other defensive tackle is from Alaska. Bottom down from the wild, wild north. The real men. Phil wants real men in his defensive line. You know, you know like the backwoods guys. Catch the beaver and skin them down. down and eight. Look out. Luke gets away from one man, throws it deep, and it's incomplete over the hands of Chris Hill. Luke was just fortunate to get it away from his own goal line as Forrest Morris applied pressure, looping around from the right side, and here comes Holstein on the kick. So that did not work out for LSU. That was a great move by Chad Luke. <laughs> He didn't want to go down where he was. That was a very athletic move to get away and then unload the ball. It's their first three and out vote today. Trailing seven to six. Tennessee will have the ball back. LSU down, of course. And Holstein. A low punt. Here comes John Summers. Gets a block. Summers to the 45-44 yard line. And what a block was leveled by Scott Gallion. He absolutely floored Brooks of LSU. A kick of 42, the return with help of 14. What a hit. And the crowd could see that coming. You could, you could hear them kind of sucking in about right now because they saw Gallion closing in on Brooks and wham, he lowered the boom. As Sean Summers squirts his way outside. Good job by Summers trying to get to the wall, and here it comes. Boom. <laughs> Brooks hits the wall in the form of Scott Gallion. 
But he's up and at him, and he's okay. Just part of the game. Got a personal foul on the play, though. Personal foul against both teams. They will uh, offset. Well, they will spot the football here. They will not kick it again, and the ball will be marked at the LSU 44. First and 10 for Tennessee, leading 7 to 7. With nine and a half minutes remaining and a low scoring first half in Wet Halen Stadium. Schuler remains in the game at quarterback. Craig Faulkner right on the hash at the 30-yard line. A quick pickup of 14 yards. We saw Faulkner get his first extended action a few years ago at against the U UCLA here in Knoxville. And, and this young man, they call him a possession receiver, but he's got a lot of speed. Had a motorcycle accident last year that tore up his wrists, and they thought he wasn't going to be able to play, but he just fought off the pain of that accident. And he is a very, very effective receiver for Tennessee. There, here comes Hayden at you. Now Horn's going to get the block that enables him to get outside. Turns upfield. Now here comes Horn again. He's going to get another one. He gets Gilliard again there. Finally, Anthony Marshall knocks him out of bounds. A gain of 22. Hayden, alone setback. Sure, calls the play at the line of scrimmage. second TD of the afternoon. Aaron Hayden reading the block of Bubba Miller, Jeff Mays, excuse me, Kevin Mays and Jeff Smith. Signed six points. Next break. It's in the air. That's good. Tennessee with two touchdowns this afternoon. LSU with a pair of field goals. 14 to 6 your score on the UT campus. Had to stay here and then Hayden this summer spent the summer working at the boys club in a reading program he said he helped turn his life around and get his mind straight last week he only ran the ball once for four yards discouraged but again in practice this week fouled to get his head back in the game and help this team and he did it today and Tennessee took but the three plays on that possession two by Hayden one a gallop of 22 and then a touchdown run of eight Here's Eddie Tennyson, always dangerous. Still on his feet to the 30-yard line. The 34 for Tennyson. And we have a penalty marker all the way back upfield at the ball 35 after the return of 29 by the freshman. Offsides Tennessee is the preliminary call by Jimmy Harper. See this again they just took Eddie Kennison to the bench they're looking at his shoulder now but look at the balance this young man has boom a room big hit there by number 75 uh, 95 Tony Robinson finally he's taken to the turf and they're looking at his shoulder right now that would be a big loss for LSU out of the shotgun on first down, and it's Chad Luke, still a quarterback for LSU. He throws short underneath. And that's Kevin Franklin of the flanker for about the five, six yards. A look at the uh, quick scoring drive here, Tim, for Tennessee. Didn't take him long, did it? No, it didn't take him long. And now we've got a, a penalty on LSU. And, and, and uh, this has been the story so far this year, you know, in uh, talking to the staff. But, you know, at times they play very well on defense, and uh, they shut out AM for a half.
that hadn't been done since 1987 when LSU had done it before. And the uh, second half is 24 points, so trying to get some consistency in their play. LSU's got a penalty of the afternoon. They run the toss sweep to the right side, and there's nothing there. It's a 30 yard line for Jay Johnson. This Reggie is Ingram, pardon me, uh, Timmy makes the stop. Excuse me. This is a time when LSU needs to keep its defense off the field for a few minutes. As you see what he's too good looking to be a middle linebacker. Come on, Reggie. You got to look madder than that. But this is a time when LSU's offense got to keep that defense off the field. And they get a good gain on first down, and then there's a penalty. Now it's first and 15. Now you've got second and 14. It'll be tough. LSU is three and out in its last possession. Tennessee took three plays to score. Loop hangs tough, gets it away, and it's off the fingertips of Shedrick Wilson at the Tennessee 45. Would have been a great catch, not a bad throw under pressure applied by Horace Morris. Morris starting to return to a predictable form here for Tennessee, having a strong second quarter than the first. Well, Horace Morris is best in must-pass situations. He explodes off the ball. He's hard upfield. I don't think he likes to wait around to see if it's going to be a run or a pass or that stuff. You know, he wants to get to the quarterback, make his imprint. Third and 15 for LSU, which is forced to call timeout. Timeout taken by LSU with five seconds showing on the play clock. The first timeout that LSU has a call today and Curly Hall and his offensive coordinator, Lynn Abbott, will talk to Chad Luther about it. Obviously, there was a formation problem there. Luke not getting the whole formation out. And, uh, or not getting the motion call done correctly. I mean, that can happen. It gets confusing. And uh, nobody ever accused Lynn Amity of doing it the, the simple way. I mean, at Vanderbilt, when I first met him, I mean, the guy's got a brilliant mind, a genius. And, uh, you know, at Vanderbilt, when he didn't have really the players that the other players uh, the team did, he was able to devise an offense that was very, very effective. But it takes a little time to pick this up. The LSU coaching staff electing to uh, shuttle players in today rather than signal from the sideline what the play will be. Both the uh, starting quarterback, Jamie Howard, and as you just saw there, uh, Chad Loop having difficulty with all of those signals in a very complex offense installed by Lynn Amity during the spring and early fall. You know, and uh, you know, the offense of Tennessee, Bill Fulmer, David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator there. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's far from vanilla, too. Wilson in motion. Williams, the lone setback on 3rd and 15. Loop throws. It's a first down for LSU. A huge play there. Upfield at the Tiger 46-yard line. They needed 15. They picked up 17. Red fresh on the uh, receiving end for LSU. Pocket breaks down a little bit. Loop, good athletic ability. And he, if that isn't in the middle of the triangle, Great job by Besh finding an open spot. Loop recognized him. Boom. Radar right there. Good job. With a fresh set of downs, and more importantly, keeping Schumer in the balls off the field. Loop with his very first completion of the afternoon. Spinning to midfield. Jay Johnson falls forward. Jason Parker hustling up from the secondary to make the tackle for the balls of talented people at running back at LSU. Jay Johnson, he was the Central Texas Player of the Year in high school. David Butler out of Homa, Louisiana, an excellent first year last year. Robert Davis, one of the most heralded running backs in the country last year out of out of Birmingham, Alabama. And now a, he's got a true freshman named Jermaine Sharp. They can run In a four, inside handoff, running room, first down to the Tennessee 40-yard line, Jermaine Wilson. Or Williams, rather, on the carry, and we go back to the field. Here's Bob. You know, last week, uh, LSU only scored one touchdown in their loss to Auburn, so the uh, offensive coordinator, Lynn Amity, decided to simplify things a little bit, cut down some of the formations, and all they've been talking about on the LSU sideline so far is execution, execution, and so far it's paying off. 
A new tailback in two, Bob, now for LSU. Little number one, a true freshman, Jermaine Sharp. And he'll get the toss sweep. Bobbles the ball, comes back this way, all the way back at his 45. Ah, a big loss for LSU. 16 yards the wrong way by the less than sure-handed freshman. Curly Holman getting Jermaine Sharp into the game. Mm. Has trouble hanging on to the football, and then, you know, this is something that he could do last year that he got used to doing over the last three years, just outrunning everybody. But that isn't going to happen here, son. These big guys, they can run fast. Good that job by James Wilson, who dragged him down. Absolutely a momentum killer in a game that uh, LSU has hung tough with favorite Tennessee. Luke, pressured, throws, caught, first down again inside the 30. <laughs> Shadrick Wilson. That's impossible. That is impossible. What a throw right on the money. It had to be perfect. It was surrounded by orange, and Luke dropped it in there. First of all, good protection. Good protection. Nobody there, nobody there. He keeps looking downfield and gets it off. And although he goes down, look at this. Orange, 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 orange everywhere. An All-American Dale Carter sitting there waiting to pick that ball off, and he throws it by him. Excellent. 8 of 27. Loop to Wilson. First down again. A fumble! by Jay Johnson and Tennessee the ball. So it's one step forward, two steps back for LSU and Curly Holman. Protect the ball, eliminate the penalty. They are playing well enough to really be in this football game, and obviously they are 14 to 6. They're in the game, but they're, they're playing well enough to be ahead. Good job by Tennessee, though. They play alert defense. They get the football. That's all I count. They were in field goal range was LSU. And now Schuler has an opportunity with five minutes remaining to go to work. And right away, he finds Billy Williams in the flat. And Williams has six yards easily. You have to play off the speed of Billy Williams. The junior and with the score here, 14 to 6 Tennessee elsewhere. Around the great game of college football in the ACC, what a rivalry that is. And the Wolfpack leading the Tar Heels at the moment. Virginia over Duke. And the Hokies and the Terps tied 7 all. Maryland seeking its very first win of the year. On second down. The inside handoff off the draw. Aaron Hayden on the carry. For the latest scores of just the games you want, call the Jefferson Pilot score line at 1-900-267-5757. Calls are $1 a minute. And uh, kids, please get your parents' permission before you dial the phone. Third and five for the volunteer. Sure on the roll. Floats downfield. Great catch at midfield by Craig Bowen. Here and he's out of bounds. A juggling act. Got control of it. And rolled into the sideline. It's a pickup of 23. Get it close to Faulkner and he's going to make the catch. It'll be interesting to see whether the juggling act was completed before he was on the white line. Look at this. Great effort. Stay after it. Stay after it. Stay after it. I, uh, I get the <laughs> Under control. No, that certainly uh, could have gone either way. That will be under review. A third down conversion, first down Tennessee. And here comes the reverse to Williams, the running room, and interference. The 40, the 35, the 39. First down still again for Billy Williams, the junior from Alcoa, Tennessee, just down the road from Shields Watkins Field. A gain of 19. Now what the LSU needs on defense is they need to pull together here. You know, every, th every time something bad has started to happen, it continued to happen. Somebody needs to come up with a big play here. Shuler on 
first down. Hands the ball to Hayden. Hayden inside the 20. And down to the 16-yard line. Schiller so adept at the play action, you wait for a moment to make certain that Hayden or whoever the ball carrier is, the running back is, has the football. But there it's a gain of 14 yards. And the tackle is by Robert Desotel, who's back in the game, although injured earlier. Once again, a fine job. Look at him, 82, David Horn. You see the work there? He keeps the containment out of the play. Nobody's there. Now Hayden's downfield. Well downfield before Anthony Marshall can make contact. Hayden on his way to a 100-yard rushing day has 46 yards as we near the half. How many will he pick up? To the 10. And on the 7-yard line. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Tennessee leading. 14 to 6. Curly Holman looked at his defensive personnel in the offseason and along with Mike Bugar decided to go to a 4-3. They just didn't have enough. Well, they didn't feel like they had enough depth to get three good down defensive linemen, so they kind of got a combination thing with the defensive end standing up. Two down defensive linemen. On second and three, Hayden to the two. He has a touchdown earlier, of course, today. Running his second, and it will be first and goal for the Volunteers as they drive on LSU. Regardless of whether you're standing up or whether you're down in a three-point stance, I mean, you still got to play. You got to take people on, get rid of them, and run to the football. And LSU still working on that part. A uh, three tight end formation, Tim, and David Hoyt. In motion, the ninth play. Tennessee move. It will not be a touchdown. On the left side, the tight end jump. Hayden goes into the end zone. They'll bring it back. Des Hotel back into the game. Anthony Marshall coming over the top. The second penalty of the afternoon is costly for Tennessee. I asked Phil Fulmer if he was still making the calls now that he's the head coach, and he says he monitors both offensive and defensive calls, but uh, but rarely interjects. Most coaches spend a lot of time during the week determining what's going to happen in specific situations on a Saturday afternoon, and he's got ultimate confidence in David Cutcliffe and that staff. Phillips and Hayden in the backfield. Schuler pitches the ball to Hayden, who's chopped down right at the seven-yard line by Denard Walker, the cornerback. LSU defended that very well. Good job by Walker. He has had a little trouble tackling early in the game, but that was a fine job. He was up in good position. It's a tough play down here when you have a quarterback that can run the ball like Schuler can. He got it out to Hayden in good time, and Walker was there to make the play. Gain of one, it's second and goal uh, from the six. Hayden the right side, and maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Calvi Crawford immediately hit him right after he took the toss. And LSU swarmed, and here comes a big play if you are a Tiger fan on third and goal. Oh, about the eight-yard line. He lost a yard and a half. Excellent play by the LSU defense responding to the, to the call here. Stewart and Hayden scored those two touchdowns. Tennessee, well, of course, with Shula, one of the things you always have to be alert of is for, excuse me, is the quarterback draw. He scored a lot of touchdowns here at Tennessee. He can run the ball well. Timeout, LSU, with Tennessee knocking on the door. Here we go. Third, third and long. You call this third and long. Third and seven, third and eight. And the eight going in. One of the things you have to watch for as they spread you out is a quarterback draw. Excellent running ability by Hugh Shuler. Five receivers will be out of the pattern. And Shuler over the middle. Touchdown, Tennessee. Corey Fleming sliding over the middle. Hit him at the goal line. Shuler with his first touchdown toss of the afternoon. Tennessee is on the board for the third time today. And Fleming made the grab. And one of the things you have to watch for, if it isn't a quarterback draw, is Corey Fleming. 
obviously the most experienced receiver that Tennessee has. And great field awareness. Good job. Let me get those. Extra. The third time today is a perfect with the extra point. So the fumble by LSU after they had driven deep into ball territory is costly as Tennessee turns right around and scores again. And once again, here's Bob Kessler. You know, last week, Tennessee rushed the ball 76 yards against Florida. That was a key thing they wanted to work on this week in practice. Unlike LSU, though, Tennessee doesn't have a whole lot of depth in the offensive line. In fact, the starting five has pretty much played all the way so far for Tennessee. One thing Philip Fulmer would love to do in this game is trying to get some of the second line guys in in game like situations. So watch in the second half to see if Tennessee's offensive line continues to dominate. If that happens, some of the younger players might get a chance to go. All right, Bob. And uh, of course, Mr. Kessling will be chatting with the Phil Fulmer about that and other facts at the uh, conclusion of uh, this first half of play, which has 42 seconds remaining in it. LSU was hanging tough for a while, but it is Tennessee now with its third touchdown in the game, 21 to 6, as we near intermission. Things would be drastically different if you're going in at halftime, only one touchdown behind, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. I think LSU, LSU has to stay doing what they're doing. They're getting good ground games. They're, they've been competitive in this half. Ryan Huffman fields the bounding ball. They up back for LSU and brings it out across the 35-yard line. And with a 35 seconds remaining in the uh, first half of play, and LSU holding uh, one timeout in its pocket. Let's see what the Tigers do beneath the lights on a gray day in Knoxville. At least it's not raining like it was prior to the kickoff. Loop into the flat, batted down as he was looking for Tennyson. Deflected by Steve White. There you go, number 64, the right end. White was there. You know, Shane Bonham was there. Harassing Loop. Didn't have much chance to get that one off. Steve White, he injured his calf in the spring and missed most of the spring. Still getting some rushes in there. Had one sack so far this year. They think he's going to be a great player. Shane Bottom, of course, a transfer from the Air Force Academy. Just a tough nut. Loop with two completions. Okay, one and two. One and two. Down. Play action thing. Going deep down the boundary for Tennessee. He overshoots it and it's picked off at the 10 yard line by Deron Jenkins. Nice diving grab. He laid out for it. Tennessee has the football back with 23 seconds remaining. Excellent catch. That's just like a long punt here. Loop just airing it out. Give Kennison a chance to compete for the ball, and he zips it down there a little bit farther than he'd like to. Out, throw, out throws Kennison, but uh, Deron Jenkins, who was a defensive back and a quarterback and a running back in high school. Good athletic ability. All right. I love it when the defense is back. Lynn Amity making a coaching point with Kennison. Mueller was at it, now takes the shot. No penalty flag. Boy, did he get hammered there by Corey White. The right end just walked over and said, if you aren't going to go down immediately on one really, knee, hello. You want to play with me, son? That'll do it. For the first two quarters, Phil Fuller, orange-clad volunteer. Leading 21 to 6. James Stewart, Aaron Hayden have rushed for touchdowns, and Heath Schuler is connected with Corey Fleming for Tennessee. LaFleur with a pair of field goals for LSU. And here with Phil Fulmer, here's Bob. Coach, you wanted to run the ball better this game. You did that in the first. So far, we're running the ball very well. You excited about your offense the way it's I am, I'm really excited if we can get them on the field more often. I don't like the fact that they're making so many third downs. Third down and long. That's, that's poor on our defensive part, and we got to get in and correct that. They stunned you on that first drive, but then you controlled them pretty well? I don't think they stunned us. They did a good job of blocking us on the first drive and stayed on. We've better so far. We're better now. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Philip Palmer, his football team leads here at halftime, 21-6. to 6. Back with our halftime activities from sold-out Neyland Stadium in Knoxville in just a moment. For LSU, that's Matt Herkamp with the ball cocked on the tee at his 35-yard line. And kicking, of course, to the uh, very dangerous Billy Williams. 
along with Nilo Sylvan. The up man at the 20 will cradle it and return for Tennessee up to the 29-yard line. That is Aaron Heaton. And so Tennessee in business, and here's how they fared, Tim, in the first half. The score a couple of punts, and then they got back on track. LSU doing an admirable job. I mean, they are they are outmanned, and most defenses that play Tennessee will be outmanned. They're hanging in there, not giving up the big play. The sun comes up as we open the second half, and the Schuler quickly connecting with Billy Williams, who slithers out of a tackle at his 35-yard line and finds uh, the 38. Calvin Crawford had him around the 35, nearly let him get away. So Schuler comes out winging it to open the third quarter. Rodney Young making the first contact down there, and Rodney was a backup safety last year to uh, Daryl McCorvey, and they got him working at corner. D Steve Davis says he's making good progress. Of course, Steve, the secondary coach at LSU. Second down and needing a yard. Gardner will power his way over the left side, and he's somewhere at the bottom of that pile as he goes over 40 yards rushing on the afternoon. And what is that rushing statistic, Tim, when uh, Tennessee rushes for better than 200 yards? They are unbeaten at the 27 and 0 over the last four or five years. Yeah, Haywood Harris and Bud Ford put together these relevant facts and they hand them on to us. <laughs> yeah, once they run for 200 yards, yeah, nobody beats them and the team they're playing is pretty well beat up. Leading 21 to 6. Schuler throwing wide open Craig Faulkner. And again, he makes a tough catch down at the LSU 40-yard line. Perhaps not as difficult as the juggling act we saw late in the first half, but this one was tough nonetheless. And it's a first down. And once again, great play action by Heath. Good job here. Good sell in the fake. Gilliard in his face, and he rifles it in there to Faulkner, who goes up in the air, makes a great catch. Clearly landing in bounds this time. The third catch for Faulkner, and the gain is of 18 yards on the first down. Gardner, a gaping hole right up the middle. Gardner to the 20. Stick arms to 15. Out of bounds at the 11-yard line. A rumble of 29 for Tennessee's number 30. Jeff Smith, Bubba Miller, Leslie Ratliff. Open it up for Charlie Gardner. Let's watch him there. Let's watch him work. Boom. Big hole there. Ricardo Washington trying to make that play. Another miss. And then Anthony Marshall saves six points for LSU. I set for Tennessee. Schuler on the roll. Looking into the end zone. Throw in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Billy Williams. career in the stadium and for Schumer his second strike airborne of the afternoon it is tough to stop Tennessee when they get down in there close they line up with four or five wide receivers a quarterback can run it gets awfully tough to come up with the strategy that'll stop them into the bold end Taylor Stadium following a five play drive by Tennessee it's now a 28 to 6 game and we'll have more from Knoxville after this. It takes Tennessee less than two minutes to register its fourth touchdown of the afternoon as we open through the second half of all 28 to 6. And here comes David Butler for LSU across the 25 and up to the 30 yard line trying to answer Heath Schuler's second touchdown strike Tim today. Look at this hole open up on the left side. You see Kevin Mays doing a nice job, giving Schuler time, and boom, he nails it in there. Torrey James tries to make an attempt to knock it out, to knock it out of Williams' hands, but it's in there. Zoom, he, and Schuler gets it there in a hurry. Back in there too is a Jamie Howard at quarterback for LSU, the young man who opened this game and then was replaced in the second quarter by Chad Lou. He will roll. Here comes the Heat, and he will not get away from Ben Talley. All the way 
way back near his 15-yard line. The sack cost LSU 15 yards. Well, on defense, you see an adjustment there. You see basically five men down, and Talley will stay at home. Well-coached player, learns well, makes a difference. Watch Ben Talley. Stick with Jamie Howard. He just didn't have the time, time to get this one off, and down he goes. Ben is actually kind to him there. Setting down gingerly. Second and forever. 23 yards needed. And maybe a yard Jermaine Williams. The senior tripped up at the line of scrimmage. And now it's third down for Jamie Howard. And this was not how the second half was supposed to begin for LSU. The numbers on Howard in the first half. The other side of this is he had a good summer in baseball for the Braves in Danville. Record was two and one, 3.66 ERA, and hitters only batted 214 against him. So that was good. Fox in the 90s probably has a few folks visiting from Danville, which is less than two hours away from here, Mike Cry. And on third down, he goes to the boundary and overshoots an open receiver in Fred Bash. 40-yard line. LSU has been able to convert sometimes dramatically on third down. They had an opportunity to do that there, and Howard overthrew Besh. He's been a little long, a little anxious, a little eager. Loop had a couple of great throws in the second quarter, and uh, they certainly, they, they feel that this young man is a fine athlete that could be a, develop into a quarterback that can lead this team for a couple of years, so they, they don't want to damage his confidence at this point. Sean Summers in single set. Tennessee with 10 men up at the line of scrimmage. They kick it, Holstein. Here is Summers calling for and making the fair catch at his 43. It's the balls, 28 to 6. Back after a word from your local station. Tennessee has the football once again as LSU was just three and out in its previous possession. Teacher and student, Lynn Amity talking to Jamie Howard. They're trying to bolster this young man's confidence, trying to explain to him what happened. But that one wasn't too tough. What happened was second and 20. Against the Tennessee defense, that makes things difficult. Schuler on first down, play action, throws, and that's caught for a short game by David Horn. He is tied in. Let's check in once again with Bob Kessling. You know, this is the last year for the artificial surface here at Neyland Stadium. They're going to rip up the rug next year and put in real grass. So they've been experimenting all summer. These are two boxes, wooden boxes. They've got Bermuda grass growing in it. They're going to see which one grows the best, and that's the one they're going to use in the stadium. They've done all kinds of shade studies to see where the problem areas are in the stadium. And, of course, this is a historical stadium. This was the first artificial surface in college football, 1968, Tennessee against Georgia. And they played, Bob, to a 17-all tie. It's Memory serves me. Charlie Gardner on the carry there, close to the first down marker. And Mike Calais, Calais, the inside linebacker on the stop. If I'm right here, Vince Dooley, then the head coach, and of course the athletic director of Georgia, refused to play the game. Uh, he was concerned, uh, playing on that surface, that his players didn't have the proper footwear. Well, Tennessee went out and helped out, purchased the shoes for Georgia, the artificial turf shoes, so that Georgia would be able to play on the uh, artificial surface. Georgia agreed to the game, and they played. And they played, and it was a tie. And it was a tie. Well, what good host. That was awfully kind. Doug Dickey, the director of athletics, the head coach then at Tennessee at the time. So many innovations in Tennessee football lore from the mind of Doug Dickey, artificial surface. He's the guy that put the orange T. Doug Dickey on the side of the Tennessee helmets, and the uh, first man to checkerboard the end zones as they're checkerboarded again this season here in Elon City. Obviously, his wife has good taste. His All son's got to be happy. Darrow, offensive coordinator, conducted their victory up there. Great win for them. He Schuler sneaks it and has it. It was a 7-3 game at the end of quarter number one and 21-6 at intermission. Schuler capping a five-play minute and 41 second possession for Tennessee, hurling his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. The first one went to Fleming at the end of the first half. His second found Billy Williams from 11 yards out. 
And Tennessee, as was predicted today, Timmy, dominating now LSU in the third quarter. Five receivers to make it four for Schuler. Play action over the middle again and wide open for Tennessee inside the 25. And down to the 24 is little Nilo Sullivan, a five foot nine inch sophomore from Covington, Louisiana. He gains 19 on the catch, facing the team from his native state of Louisiana. <laughs> you know, and there is excitement at every position in this Tennessee offense. So much talent. Schuler lays it right in there next to Calais and Sylvan, who averaged over 10 yards a carry as a senior from Covington, Louisiana. Makes the catch and they bring him down. His first of the day, second of the year for the end zone and complete. Joey Kent with his arms outstretched. Torrey James was the defensive back. Right on his hip at the goal line. Good job by Torrey James trying to run the fade in there and he ran right with him. Excellent job. You know, the interesting thing about that first half, although it ended at 21 to six in favor of Tennessee, LSU maintained possession of the football for 18 minutes. They moved the ball on the Tennessee defense and had it inside the 20 with the score of 14 to six. Late in the first half and then put it on the ground, fumbled it away. Schuler calls the play at the line of scrimmage for Blitz is on. He's got man coverage over there in the corner. Threw it away a second time. Corey Fleming, the intended receiver. Corey James. They're picking on James at the moment, testing him. He was there defensively. Well, he's passing so far because he forced Corey Fleming inside. You'd like to get an outside release on that right route, but uh, obviously well coached by Steve Davis. He forced the receiver inside, and that didn't permit him to get to the ball. And he sure laid it outside. Here's your five receiver set for Schuler out of the shotgun. LSU blitzes it's a low snap. Schuler with time throws touchdown. Brad Buckner on a 24-yard touchdown pass. Touchdown of the day by Tennessee. Allen Stansberry is in the middle there. Mike Calais, who certainly can't run with Faulkner. And then Anthony Marshall came over the top and then limped off the field. It looked like he was injured. As Ryan Huffman came in for the extra point. Tennessee has scored more than 30 points in each and every game this year. The top offense in the Southeastern Conference is ringing him up again. John Bexford contributing. And Craig Faulkner has his third touchdown of the season. The second leading receiver for Tennessee. One of the better ones. 5'11 in the SEC. Let's look at that touchdown again. Craig Faulkner also sporting, sporting a little new uh, haircut. Close cut on the side there. Good job by Faulkner. And Schuler obviously under pressure. People coming everywhere. Realized where to go with the football and put it on the money. It's not a it's not a ball that you have to fire in there. He just laid it up. He knew there would be an open area. See Kippy Brown, a former assistant with the New York Jets, now they working with the receivers here, talking to Heath, the rest of the receivers. Line drive kickoff. Kennison watches it roll into the end zone, and it will be down there a touchback. Let's check in once again with Bob. The weather's a little nicer now, Bob, for you down there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit warmer now, but at least yeah. it's not raining. You know, Craig Faulkner is a great story, too. He uh, broke his wrist in a motorcycle accident two years ago. Played last year with actually a fractured dislocation of his wrist. It was kind of sore and tough. He played through the year. Then the doctor said, well, you got to have an operation. He was a grad assistant in the spring, and then they told him right before spring practice, you can resume your career. So every touchdown Craig Faulkner has now is a bonus and a terrific story. He's just fought through a lot of pain to continue to play for Tennessee. All right, Robert LSU taking over. Jamie Howard at the helm. He keeps the football right back to the line of scrimmage. And uh, a bit slow in getting up is very large. Paul Yatkowski, the right tackle, makes his fifth stop this afternoon. 
for the Volunteers. 250 pounder, they call him a finesse tackle. How can you be a finesse tackle at his size? Means you have good hands and good feet and you got a good moose call if you're from Winnipeg, <laughs> Winnipeg Canada. Probably skate a little bit, huh? Right. Play the hockey. No gain on the play. Howard remains in there. They run the toss sweep to Jay Johnson. He cuts back, has five, six yards. Edkowski draws the oohs and the ahs as he slides down the line of scrimmage and makes another stop in that Darth Vader mask. Watch this Tennessee defense move laterally. Get support from the outside. Good close by Jenkins. <laughs> Forces Jay Johnson back into where he doesn't want to go. Edkowski and bottom, the two tackles, Wilson and Morris on the outside in the four-man front defensively for Tennessee, and here's another possession snap on third down and five for LSU with Tennessee headed this way. Howard gets Callie Block to buy some time, throws, and it's caught close to a first down and hanging on. Scott Ray indeed has the first down for the Tigers, a gain of seven yards. Good job, and once again in a third and long situation, LSU converts. Bill Fulmer talked about it as he was going in. Jermaine Williams gets Ben Talley on the ground. That buys Jamie Howard some time, and he fires it back to Scott Ray, whose dad, actually, Eddie, led the Tigers in rushing in 1969. He's proud of his senior son who picks up his first reception. Well, the afternoon scored a touchdown last week against Auburn. Howard's in trouble, unloads it underneath to Jermaine Williams. And Williams has seven. seven. It's so rare to see LSU throwing in any fashion to a running back. Coming into this game in three games, Tim, they had only found a running back three times with the pass. They don't throw to their backs in this offense. Well, you know, Jamie Howard's a pitcher, pitcher and the guys that can gun it downfield, they, they enjoy doing it that. Doing that. I, I remember hearing Joe Namath talk about not wanting to dink it to the backs and throwing it to yeah. wide receivers. So, but in the game, the way it's played today, you have to be able to dump the ball to backs and tight ends and then pick your spot when you're throwing it downfield. The fullback in Williams racked up right at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and the whistle had blown before all of this pushing and shoving began. Howard tugging on the jersey of George Kidd and then smiled at him. And no harm intended. And that goes the linebacker to the Tennessee side of the field. The big boy is going at it. Good effort there. You see number 65, Ross Setter, staying with his man. Not much of a hole that time for Williams. George Kidd's going to run. That's it. At least don't pick on the big guys, Daniel. Second and nine for LSU, trailing 35 to 6. Midway through the third quarter. And Franklin is in the backfield. Howard guns, first down. Whoops, melted out of bounds on a big hit. Chris Hill. Darren Jenkins knocked him right into the volunteer sideline. Hit him hard. And it's a first down and the seventh completion this afternoon for the young sophomore, Jamie Howard. He's 7 of 12 now for close to 70 yards. And they've got him moving a little bit now. See Lynn Ambity has his jacket off now as it's turned into a nice afternoon here in Knoxville. They've got Howard moving the pocket a little bit, trying to buy him some more time. They're getting good blocks from their fullback on the containment that actually are adding to the time he has to throw the ball. On first down in volunteer territory, Robert Tumor. Gains nine and a half, if not ten. Nothing fancy about that. Good blocking up front by the LSU offensive line. Let's look at that line work. See Maui, 73, Simnick. 86 down on the bottom in your picture, Harold Bishop. These guys are staying after it. You have to give them credit for that. 35 to 6. When you're getting beat 35 to 6, I don't care who you're getting beat by, it's embarrassing. But uh, they're staying after it. They haven't lost any of their intensity on offense. They're going to score some points. Bringing Hill into the game to replace Bishop. Hill, a better receiver. The ninth play of this drive for LSU. Howard on the move again. Unleashes great catch, 25-yard line. Chris Hill has had a busy afternoon. The 6'5", 
foot, five inch, tall sophomore tight end from Mansfield, Louisiana. And he makes a first down reception there. That's his fifth catch of the day for Chris Hill. Called his number a lot today, and he has responded. Once again, Jermaine Sharp came in, is into the game. Lynn Amity calling for a timeout. Howard now sees it. It's timeout LSU with five minutes and 15 seconds remaining on the third quarter clock. And a game the Tigers trailed Tennessee by the score of 35 to 6. We welcome you back to Nayland Stadium, Shields Watkins Field, with Bob Kessling, our sideline reporter, and Tim Foley. I'm Paul Kennedy. LSU sustaining its drive. This is the 11th play of it, coming off its own timeout, facing first and 10 at the Volunteer 26, but trailing by a bunch. Jamie Howard over the middle. It is caught inside the 15 by Scott Ray. And another first down for LSU. Ray, the senior with the second grab of this drive, and the play gains 15. Good call by LSU. They put Jermaine Sharp in the game. Tennessee, obviously, at that point, is thinking run. Jermaine stepped up and tried to pass protect. Of course, yep. of course nobody came. LSU, to me, has scored all of two touchdowns this year, both through the air. They've yet to get one on the ground. Howard, or rather Johnson, inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. So LSU displaying some character against the long odds here on a long afternoon in Knoxville. And Curly Holman on the left, Len Amity on the right, trying to find the right combination against one of the league's better defenses. And volunteers. Actually trying to find the right combination, I think, for the rest of the year. Yep. Howard on second down. We'll check off here. Four seconds on the play clock. Into the end zone, he goes, incomplete. Ray, the intended receiver, got one hand on the football. Ronald Davis was there for Tennessee. That's the first incomplete pass for Howard in this half. Good read by Jamie Howard. He senses the blitz, decides to throw the fade. Might work out. Ronald Davis celebrates. That was only second down, Ronald. Third down coming up. Good job, though. LSU can enter first down. It reaches the Tennessee one. Schubert behind his quarterback, the long setback. Three receivers set this way. Howard again for the end zone. Throws. It's batted around incomplete. Very nearly intercepted by Tennessee's Davis. He had to go up in the air for it, but got two hands on the football. Wilson, the intended target. And it's now fourth down for LSU. And, of course, a field goal will do them little good. They'll go for it. They run a combination route on the strong side there. And, interestingly enough, the Tennessee defensive backs don't switch. They play a zone. That put Ronald Davis right in the correct spot. Lovey Smith got to be proud of the way that Ronald Davis is playing here. The same formation. A 14th play of the drive. It is fourth down. Tigers for Baton Rouge. And a new quarterback for Tennessee, Jerry Colquitt, coming into the game. Well, nobody open there for LSU on either side. Jamie Howard throwing it to the tallest player. Colquitt on his first snap. Turns and hands the football to James Stewart who fights his way across the 10 and out to the 12. The junior from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, just down the road, of course, from Knoxville. 
and called by uh, the coaching staff as talented a backup quarterback as Tennessee may have ever had here. As good as a lot of folks who have started for the Big Orange through the years. David Cutler talks about him with pride. He, he thinks he could be a great quarterback if called on to be prepared. He said if he was a regular player, he'd probably play half the time, but you just don't, you don't alternate quarterbacks like you do tackles or guards or wide receivers yeah. and the like. James Stewart again working the middle. Alan Stansberry, the linebacker on the right side with his first tackle of the day for LSU. And there's a look at Heath Schuler, who has helped Tennessee to this huge lead in throwing today three separate touchdown passes. He could probably park his Batmobile for the night. You know, I'd come let Jerry go the rest of the way. Horn in motion. The toss, a third straight time for Stewart. A first down, the 25, still on his feet at the 27. Competition is one of the things that creates excellence. And I'm sure that having Charlie Garner in here has made James Stewart and Aaron Hayden better running backs. I mean, they've got to play with more intensity if they're going to get some time. And look at James, little man Stewart here. Taking it up, Gilliard can't make the play. Good lead block. Good job running by James Stewart. First and 10 from the Tennessee 28 yard line as a flag goes down. Still another carry for James Stewart. As Tennessee begins to keep it on the ground here now and kill some time off the clock. And as our referee, Jimmy Harper, tells us, a penalty is against Tennessee. During the run, holding, offensive line, 10-yard penalty. On the interior. When you talk about fine offensive line, this is one of the college football teams that you talk about annually, and that's because of the job that Phil Fulmer has done here. And now he's brought in Steve Marshall to work with the offensive lineman as his duties have evolved see some of the same results though. Colquitt checking at the line of scrimmage. Short drop, three step drop. And it comes to Benji Schuler at the 19 game, about a yard and a half. Let's check in with Bob once again. You know, it's been a frustrating day for the LSU offense, haven't been able to get into the end zone, but not because of a lack of effort from their center, senior Kevin Mawai. He's a little bit superstitious. Back when he was a freshman at Leesville High School in Louisiana, he uh, had his freshman jersey. He's kept that with him all the time. As a matter of fact, he now sews a piece of the jersey inside his LSU game jersey. He said it brings him good luck. He hopes to inspire him now to get him going. Also, we can tell you one other thing. He also has an LSU Tiger tattooed to one of his ankles. The Leesburg native, the senior, the three-year letterman. Oh, wow. This has been exclusively James Stewart. He's had more uh, featured action here than the actor by the same name. Good job by Stansberry, too. Alan Stansberry, a true freshman out of Baton Rouge. Mike Calais combining on that tackle. He's, they feel he can be a great one as Mike Bugar sends in the sends in the defensive call. Third down and 16 with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Jerry Colquitt. Play action for Colquitt. Over the middle, and it's caught close to the first down by Joey Kent. Which spot will he get? He needed to reach the 38-yard line, and when Kent went down, he was right at the 38. The play gains 16. Colquitt to Kent. And it is a first down for the Volunteers. Fine throw by Colquitt. Good coverage by LSU. Not a lot of room, but he stuck it in there. Colquitt with a pair of completions and as many tries after relieving Schuler. Number of fresh numbers in there. Jerseys for Tennessee. Here's Stewart wearing down LSU. Banging away, pounding, and now popping one across midfield and inside the 45 to the 44. A pickup of 18 yards, and that'll do it through three quarters of play. It's Tennessee in a big way, 35 to six. 
here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Two winners. It's been a long day for LSU after early promise in this one. They were hanging right in there through a quarter and a half with Tennessee at the balls. Now as the fourth quarter begins, lead as you see. And enjoy first and 10 at the LSU 45-yard line. And this is Colquitt. To the boundary. And that is caught inside the 40 and down to the 38-yard line. As we take a look. Uh, Most Phillips on the receiving end of the lead apparel game summary after three quarters of play. Tennessee has pretty much had things their way in the second half. In terms of statistics, it was close at halftime. LSU had a major lead in time of possession. Tennessee, Tennessee has just ground away here in the second half. Second down and five. This is the ninth play of the drive, and again it's James Stewart. Stewart has a touchdown today, and there's been great balance among the three tailbacks of Stewart, Garner, and Hayden. All have carried about eight, nine, ten times. That was the tenth carry there for Stewart, and all have gained between 60 and 70 yards. North Carolina turns it on in the second half, and Mac Brown's Tar Heels heating up on NC State. Auburn in the uh, second quarter leading Curly Holman's former school in Virginia Tech. May keep Maryland winless. They are at the half in Blacksburg. For the latest scores or just the games you want, call the Jefferson Pilot score line at 1-900-267-5757. Calls are a buck apiece. Out of the back there, right is Stewart. It's like they've forgotten about him for a while, and now we're calling his number on every play. He's got to like this, doesn't he? It's a first down for the ball. Phil Fulmer's got to like it, too. You know, when you have a man with that much composure behind your first string quarterback it got to give you a Phil you can sleep good at night that's nice you like what's happening here this is the way it ought to be talking to him about being a head coach and uh, he seems to be dealing with the pressure fairly well you know, after the Florida game last week I mean, he was required to win this week and he dealt with it in exemplary fashion well LSU figures it out this time and Talby Crawford drops James Stewart for a loss on the play. Tennessee quite clearly backing off the throttle here, killing the clock, trying to get this one over as rapidly as they can, enjoying the big league of a uh, big lead of 35 to 6. And Talby Crawford, he looked good in the film that I looked at, the tape that I looked at, and he was upfield earlier in the uh, first half in support. And that's one thing that this LSU defense needs, a little bit more aggressive support at the corners and Crawford's playing well. Play action and the screen set up here. Holt with dumps. Stewart with the football and out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Colquitt is a perfect five of five through the air in relief of Heath Schuler and down on a very noisy field once again. Here's Big Pop. You know, you talk about Tennessee's tailbacks. Aaron Hayden has taken his shoulder pads off. He is a bruised right thigh so he's out of the game but you still got Charlie Garner James Littleman Stewart and also there's a freshman tailback by the name of Jay Graham who uh, won't be redshirted he will play one of the highly talented tailbacks in the country coming out of high school last year so Tennessee has a deep and well stocked backfield right now all right well a Graham a 215 pounder from Kannapolis North Carolina great speed Stewart to the uh, eight-yard line on first and goal. Stansberry makes the tackle, Alan Stansberry. One of the things that has hurt the LSU defense this afternoon is that Gabe Northern got in a little altercation probably on a kickoff. We just got the note that he and a, and a Tennessee player had been ejected, so they probably had a little fisticuffs down there. But And it certainly hurt LSU more than it hurt Tennessee because Gabe was a guy that they used in passing situations and uh, just has a lot of speed in there at the inside. Most of them providing interference. Corporate rolls. Corporate rolls. Corporate touchdown. And it's Ben Schiller on the receiving end. A big name for the Schiller family. His brother throws for three and Schiller is on the receiving end for one of them. Oh, uh, here, his second touchdown of the year for the freshman from North Carolina. 
Volko takes it to the outside. Just far too much time to stay with somebody man to man in the end zone. Benji finally works his way free of Gary Pegues, and it's six points for the Volunteers. Soon to be a 42 to six game. Henry Shirley, a true freshman, trying to live up to his brother's reputation and doing a pretty fair job, isn't it? It's the Big Orange in a big way today in Knoxville. At one time, LSU was within a single point at 7-6, to six, but Tennessee has just scored its fifth consecutive unanswered touchdown. And you see it is the quarterback in Colquitt throwing here to Benji Schuler, And Schuler on the receiving end has a touchdown, and it's Tennessee 42 to 6. You do that so well. <laughs> Colquitt was a perfect 6 of 6 in that 14 play drive. For Tennessee. Back up he is, Keith Schuler. Right up man. And Butler now off the bounce. And Butler with some daylight to the 40 yard line. To midfield to the Tennessee 40. The stiff arm earns him the 30 and down to. The 27-yard line. A 51-yard return for David Butler and LSU. Great job by David Butler working his way. The ball pops up in the air, comes down to it. He avoids a few tacklers, finds an opening to the left, and there he goes. Good vision. Now, now watch. That's Raymond Austin. Raymond Austin dragged him down. An excellent effort trying to drag the ball out there of David Butler. But a couple of young players that you're going to see a lot of in the future. Butler and Austin. Now the sophomore and Butler from Homa. Another sophomore and Jamie Howard steps up from pressure and throws toward the end zone looking for Tennyson. It collides with the defensive back and Darren Jenkins near the goal line. And the pass falls into the end zone incomplete. Duran Jenkins has had a good game here this afternoon. He was tested, as you noted, on that goal line situation and a couple of times in a row covered people on the face. Got one interception already today. Less than 12 minutes remaining in this football game, which to all the world looks to be Tennessee's third win of the season and second in the Southeastern Conference. Nothing there for Robert Davis, the sophomore tailback from Birmingham. Scott Gallion, a middle linebacker, made the tackle, and for Scott, it's his fourth stop of the afternoon. So that's the fifth running back today, other than the uh, two quarterbacks we've seen, and Howard and Luke carry the ball for LSU. And number five and Davis comes off the field. the sixth, Jermaine Sharp had trouble with the handle on a toss sweep. Third and 11 for LSU. Howard to the boundary, and he's fortunate that that was not broken up. Well, intercepted here, a flag will go down. They'll call it pass interference under Ron Jenkins. The intended receiver was Kevin Franklin, and they're saying that Jenkins got his hand on Franklin's back prior to the ball arriving. Defensive interference. First down, by the foul. A rare error today, Tim, by Tennessee. Larry Marmee decides to zone the strong side here, and Duran Jenkins is in great shape to actually make an interception. Yep. But it's just uh, it's that defensive back paranoia. As you're going for the ball, you like to always feel that receiver someplace, make sure they're not running away from you. And so they... That was a merciful flag right there. Mesh and Franklin to the top of your screen. And the handoff will keep it on the ground, and it's Robert Toomer. Nearing the first down marker inside the 20, reached the uh, 17, inside the 17-yard line for the 212-pounder. Sylvester Georgia, fellow who broke all of Herschel Walker's high school rushing records. Georgia, close to 8,000. Rushing yards as a high school player. More than 100 touchdowns in his prep career. And you see his numbers this afternoon. Headed toward the bold end zone of Neyland Stadium. 
Toomer cuts back to his left and fights his way for a tough four yards. Well, as you mentioned in the opening, Paul, LSU has a young football team, and Curly Holman and his staff have done an excellent job in recruiting. Got some fine young talent, and, but there's nothing that can take the place of experience and working together as a group. And that's what this team will learn to do over this, the course of this season. Davis is the lone setback. Jermaine Williams, the fullback, breaks out on the wing left side. Three receivers headed that way. And a simple handoff to Davis. And he's in the uh, inside the 10-yard line down to the nine. Reserve right tackle. Leland Taylor, number 57, makes his first tackle of the afternoon for Tennessee. You see Davis making the cut there. And Jesse Sanders, number 22, he cut inside Jesse. And Jesse stayed down. I don't know if he twisted his ankle or hyperextended his knee. But I guess it's his ankle. Let's hope that young man's OK. And an obvious pain here. With the pause in the action, we'll step aside as well. Tennessee leading LSU in Nalen Stadium. Our Jefferson Pilot Sports broadcast team welcoming you back to Nalen Stadium. The crowd stirring a bit as LSU is threatening for its first score, its first touchdown of the afternoon, following two first half field goals. Jamie Howard has the Tigers second and six at the ball nine. He'll pass for the end zone and he overshoots Brett Besh. Besh hooking back toward the pylon appeared to have position on the volunteer defensive back. And it's incomplete. Besh has been a real story for them. A walk on who just got a scholarship this fall. And he seems to be a go-to guy for Jamie Howard. He seems to feel really comfortable with him. It'd be great for these young Tigers to get a touchdown on the board. They've had, as we told you earlier, but two all season long. Now the Volunteers don't feel that way. Though. On the roll. Into the end zone. Caught. There's touchdown number three. And it's Brett Besh on the receiving end. Touchdown, LSU. It takes better than three and a half quarters, but finally LSU has something to show for its efforts this afternoon. And Jamie Howard has hurled his third touchdown pass of the season. How did he get that in there? Jermaine Williams does a nice job of keeping Jester out of it. And Bash comes back in front of Sean Summers to make that catch. That looked like he was going to be intercepted, and Bash made a nice adjustment on the ball, and it's a touchdown for the Tigers. LaFleur with the extra point. Oh, he shoots, he scores. Timeout on the field. 42-13 now, Tennessee over visiting LSU. The junior from Slide, Louisiana, Brett Besh, on the receiving end of the touchdown strike from Jamie Howard. He's had a pretty big couple of weeks here, Tim. Yes, he has. He's tied for seventh in the SEC with a number of receptions per game. And that's a good story. And you see the touchdown strike here, and he just did get across the goal line in double coverage for the score for LSU. Talking to Chad Luke there, who played extensively in the second quarter. LSU will kick it away. And it is Howard from his three-yard line. Tripped up at the 15 and out of bounds. A return of a close to 11 yards. And Tennessee owns the football with just under 10 minutes remaining. Billy Williams on the return there. We've had professional assistance up here from uh, Greg Bowser, who works with Jefferson Pilot Sports and does a great job. And of course, he lives in Baton Rouge. He's been fill filling us in with pertinent Louisiana information as Bob Kessling has had such a slanted opinion of this football game <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> from the field. <laughs> Here's a young man of promise, a young left-handed sophomore, Todd Helton, and in quarterback. And they'll hand it inside, and it's Cleon Mitchell breaking tackles through a fatigue 
LSU defense and racing for a first down pickup out to the 27 yard line. A gain of 13 yards. Cleon down from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. You know what they're saying in the LSU secondary. Now, who is this guy? Another one? Give me strength. Would be the seventh running back to total football. The guy's in orange today. Here's Eric Lane. Still another. Fresh pair of legs really testing our spotter now this is when you find out I mean this is when Kim Anderson really earns his money a freshman from Chestnut Ridge New York so the two carries by Phil Fulmer's Vols you've had a Floridian and a New York native That's geographical it. balance Phil's putting in all the foreigners now <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee's next game uh, the Vols will take on the Duke Blue Devils right here out of the ACC Next weekend. And the left hand is firing. Complete first down. Todd Helton can really sing it. He's a Knoxville native. And the quarterback of the future, and it's Benji Schuler hooking up with him. David Cutcliffe is also very high on Todd Helton. He has a real gun for an arm. Good job by the LSU defender pulling that ball out. Jay Graham takes the handoff, cuts back to his right, and works, it, works his way up to the 45-yard line. Mike Calais makes his seventh tackle today. A hard-working inside linebacker for LSU. The redshirt freshman, number 56, has uh, played his heart out today. But unfortunately for LSU, if you are a Tiger fan, this will go into the loss column. LSU will depart Knoxville at one and three and uh, a shade below 500, one and two in the Southeastern Conference. Their next game next Saturday in Baton Rouge against Utah State out of the whack. In the backfield and dropped is Jay Graham. Taken down for a loss of five yards. And it's Pat Rogers. Blitzing through. For LSU. Next week against Utah State, Lynn Amity will match his offensive strategies against the defensive coordinator for Utah State, a good friend of mine named Dick Bumpus, who was a near All American candidate in Arkansas back in the uh, late 60s. Played for Frank Broyles. Third and nine for help. Setting up the screen. Throwing it, deflected, incomplete. Intended over here for Jay Graham in the flat. A quarterback pressure applied by Eric Valentino for LSU. So uh, Tennessee will have to punt with six and a half minutes remaining in this football game. That was a good read by the LSU defense. And Helton never really had any place to go with it. Nice job. Check in with Bob as Tom Hutton is getting set to punt. We'll get him in a minute. The left-footed punter in Hutt toward Kennison. Watches it bounce in front of him. And right into the sideline. And uh, here, after much ado, is Bob Kessler. You know, you talk about the job that Philip Homer has done a long time. Assistant coach here under Johnny Majors, 13 years. He was a graduate assistant before that and a player at Tennessee. So he knows something about the volunteer tradition here at UT but I still get chills when I run through the tee. And, it, and, uh, and, and when a player uh, makes a great play, I still feel uh, that you know, he just made himself a part of the Tennessee tradition. And, and I very much look at it that way. The tee of Tennessee and under the alumnus, Phil Fulmer. They are 7-1 and one with Phil at the helm. And still, of course, can win the eastern half of the SEC pointed that out to us yesterday. As Howard throws, this is caught. And it's Josh Bradley, reserve tight end on the receiving end. Uh, Phil telling us that Tennessee with one conference loss is in the same shape that Florida was a year ago when they ended up winning the division. A look at our scoreboard, and Carolina has indeed bounced back nicely from the loss to Florida State. 
Auburn, by two touchdowns over Southern Miss, playing in Jordan Hare today. And a good one. And Death Valley. Bill Lewis and Ken Hanfield going against each other in that one. Here comes LSU. And Robert Toomer toting the football. We'll remind you for the latest scores of just the games you want. Call the Jefferson Pilot score line at 1-900-267-5757. Calls are $1 a minute. And kids, please get your parents' permission. Saw Joe Dean at breakfast, the uh, athletic director at LSU, and uh, what a fine man, and he had a vote of confidence for Curly Hallman. And that's about the only LSU news that reached Orlando last week with Joe Dean saying that you know, how many games does he have to win? He doesn't have to win any. I'm going to stick with my guy. He's just being loyal to his head coach, giving him a chance to do his thing. Howard doing his thing. Throwing open. He's got a receiver all the way across midfield to the 45-yard line. Shedrick Wilson came back for the football, the sophomore, and made the first down reception with 5.08 left in the football game. Play fakes are a little irrelevant at this point. He does a nice job of avoiding the rush of Shane Burton and then dumps it downfield of Shedrick Wilson. Curly. Nobody's ever going to say that Jamie Howard doesn't have velocity behind the football. Now, Curly has a quarterback here, and uh, Jamie Howard for the future. Chad Luke, with some senior experience, too, will probably play as he did somewhat in each and every game. Here's Howard again. Tennyson in motion. Howard in trouble. Defensively for Tennessee, Tony Robinson, the defensive end, was applying pressure. And five yards for the foul, lost the down. I would agree with you, Jimmy Harper. Jamie's trying to find somebody in the flat. It's not there. No. Let's get rid of it. Jermaine Williams was uh, within 25 yards of that. I was trying to throw it to him, Jim. Second and long. That's correct. And 20, 29. Close to 30. Here I LSU as you see spreading the field. From a 36 yard line. Howard fires it deep over the middle. Kennison leaps to make the catch and goes down at the 44 yard line. Torrey Knoll from the secondary snapped it, but a big gain on the play of 19 yards. He's had a problem with that shoulder ever since a kickoff return early in the game. He's laid out of football for a year uh, as he got his grades up. And he said that didn't affect him that much because he had to do that in high school once, not because of grades, just because he moved from Houston to Lake Charles. Third down play. Howard's in trouble. Here comes Robinson giving chase. Howard has the first down. Running for his life, perhaps, if he had turned around and seen Big Tony Robinson chasing it. That's a first down on the sweep. He gained a dozen yards. Upfield, Tony Robinson scoots by Marcus Price, and I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get back here. Missed him by that much. Game now escapes to the safety of the white line. 350, and this one is over. 42-13. Tennessee. They scored five consecutive touchdowns. They go from leading them up by seven to six to up 42 to six. Robert Toomer, number 36, inside the 25, down to the 22. We'll remind you while we have this opportunity that the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is, of course, prohibited. Roy Kramer, the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference. Stop by the booth here at the half. He, of course, grew up in Maryville, not too far from here. Good to see Coach Kramer again. Three minutes to go. And down goes Jamie Howard. Back at the 31. Steve White with the sack. The right.
tight end for Tennessee. Now, Tennessee has six good defensive linemen, six good athletes, but they don't really have a dominant player as they've had in the past, a Chris Mims or a Todd Kelly. They feel like Steve White has the potential to develop into somebody like that, but right now, their defense is devoid of a guy that you have to know where he lines up because he can wreak havoc. Two and a half to play, and LSU trying to hang one more score on the board. Howard throws, and the receiver never came back for the football. Shedrick Wilson had two defenders right with him and did not break off the route as Jamie Howard obviously thought he might. And it's fourth down and eight yards to go as Curly Holman has seen Tennessee's offense roll up close to 500 yards of total offense today against his purple and gold team. LSU offensively had a great rush before the end of the first half had the ball deep in Tennessee territory fumbled it away and this game was never the same. Could have tied the game at that point. Got away from him after that. On fourth down, Howard throws, he has a first down. Nice catch, Scott Ray at the 15-yard line and LSU remains in business with just over two minutes remaining. Good read by Loops. Scott Ray finds the open area. And the son of Eddie makes the catch. Good job by Scott. Good hands. Way to get up for the ball. A pickup of 15. Right out two minutes remaining in this game. It is first and 10 at the 15 yard line. A bobble, a broken play. Howard sack. The fourth sack today <laughs> by Tennessee. This time it's Raymond Austin that does the job. The young freshman from Latin, Oklahoma, who is a track star. And I don't think anyone is going to outrun him, especially a quarterback. Jamie never really had control of that one. Never really got the ball from Hawaii. Those things happen. The center gets to thinking about something else. It didn't look like he came out of there too soon. Now they go to the shotgun. Second down. Just over a minute remaining. Howard ranks for the end zone. Incomplete. The intended receiver Scott Ray and right there all over in Torino. Old. In perfect position. And that stops the clock with 65 ticks remaining. Look at these names. Tim Foley. LSU alumni, yes. Tigers in the big time. These are guys that played in all-star games in the various sports. Of course, Albert Bell for Cleveland Indians in baseball. Shaquille O'Neal for the Orlando Magic in basketball. And then Henry Thomas and Michael Brooks. Albert Bell and Brennan Jermaine this year from the Tribe this year. Chris Hill on his knees at the 16-yard line with 50 seconds and counting to go in the game and oh no, Hill is injured. Chris Hill, the sophomore, has had a productive day, will go down unfortunately late in the game. Well, that's a pattern that Florida runs all the time, hitched by the outside receiver, run the inside man on a corner route, the quarterback, Read the support. Well, what did LSU find out about its football team today, Paul? Well, if it would not commit silly mistakes, it could hang with a great many teams. Two plays in particular stand out in the first half. The fumble by Jay Johnson down deep when LSU was with some momentum, facing an opportunity to perhaps tie this game, and the other playing kids, as they had to do, putting Jermaine Sharp in the game, and he fumbles across some 16 yards. It's going to be a struggle in building with freshman and sophomore. That's exactly right. And I think they're on the right track in terms of simplification. You know, they've got some people with some talent, but if you give them too much to think about, then they do more thinking than they do reacting, and that's why they're where they are, because they're 
talented athletes that react well. Hey, touchdown! Fred Besh, his second of the game. Tennis, or LSU had two touchdowns entering this game in three games. Now has two in the fourth quarter here. Fred Besh, a second time from Jamie Howard. Well, he said it's first couple years as a walk-on he had to live in another dorm and walk over to the uh, athletic dorm for dinner and you know he felt a little bit like an outsider and of course he doesn't feel like an outsider anymore a young man that got a scholarship this fall and has turned out to be a premier receiver for LSU this will make it a 42 to 20 game with less than a minute to go in Knoxville the waning moments of this one with Tim Foley Bob Kessling I'm Paul Kennedy. Wendy Fisher Boyd has been our producer today. It's been good to have you along on what started out as a rainy Saturday afternoon in Knoxville. It poured earlier, and the sun has come out, and Tennessee is, we expected, the 11th ranked volunteers have dominated young and rebuilding LSU. Although uh, these young Tigers have put two touchdowns on the board in the fourth quarter. The onside kick does not travel 10 yards. And uh, the penalty will give, obviously, Tennessee the football. Kind of surprised that LSU would do that. Trailing as they are by more than three touchdowns with 27 seconds to go. Well, I think one of the things that Curly Holman is trying to instill in his players is never give up. And so I think as a coach, you got to approach the game with the same attitude. Don't ever give up. You see Chris Hill being escorted off the field. So what can happen in 27 seconds? You can't score 22 points. Well, but you got to think like that. And that's what he's trying to teach his team, I think. Winston Churchill football. That's yes, it. Thank you very much. Never. Can you do English, too, as good as French? <laughs> I think you could do French so well because you went to school at Virginia Tech. You yeah. know, and Hokies, of course, can speak great French. Not a chance. <laughs> Oh, Graham on the carry comes out of the pile and uh, that'll do it. This one is over. It is a Tennessee victory. 42 to 20 this afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee. The balls at three and one, two and one in the league. And LSU falls for the third time this year. Back to wrap it up after this word from our local station.